Welcome to this week's TDD Weekly Report for the week ending October 22nd. Uh, this first one is from gizmodo.com. It is, it looks like NASA found ESA's crashed Mars lander. If you've been following it, the European Space Agency, along with the Russian Space Agency, was hoping to not just get a craft into orbit, but also get a lander to touch down. This is not like a rover. This is just a lander to land successfully as a test mission. And I will um, put up this picture. Uh, it was originally a, a GIF picture, but I got it so that I can hopefully show you the picture blinking on and off. And if you look in the upper part of the square, you'll see a black mark, which uh, is a crater maybe about 100 meters wide or so, that when it nosed in, the uh, tanks were pretty much still full of fuel, and it created a dark burned crater. And if you look towards the bottom, you will see a little white spot that is the parachute. And I'll read a little bit from the article here. On Wednesday, the European Space Agency attempted to land a probe on Mars and things went bad. While the ExoMars mission team continued to piece together why its Chaparelli lander lost contact with the Earth, NASA has now obtained photographic evidence of what appears to be a crash landing. And, uh, yeah, it nosed in just like I predicted. And, uh, sadly, it uh, probably hit it around 180 miles per hour and in free fall one and a quarter to two and a half miles above the surface at a velocity greater than 180. And given the landers, thruster tanks were likely full of unburnt fuel. It's possible the crash was accompanied by an explosion, which would explain why the Red Planet has a strange new burn mark. Um, nobody probably witnessed it, but it would have been kind of cool to see if it could have been, because it was probably a huge fireball. Now they're saying we have one of our uh, little robot uh, rovers on the planet that's about maybe 10 miles away. I'm wondering if possibly in the future NASA may take one of our rovers over there to explore the wreckage site. But anyway, a lot harder to get to Mars and successfully land than people think. So, you know, they got to be really sure before we start sending men there in 2030. But I think NASA is still ahead of the game of, above anybody else, too. I mean, um, they didn't participate in creating this mission, but um, they were the first to send back photographs of the result of. Uh, the one failure of the mission, although still the orbiter is considered a success. The uh, orbiter part in exploring some of the upper atmosphere of Mars will continue, and that part was successful. Another thing that I was talking about, and this is from NASA.gov, Hubble reveals observable, uni observable universe contains 10 times more galaxies than previously thought. I was talking myself about, I think, still a lot of the what they call dark matter is going to be ordinary matter, and it's going to be discovered, things like this. Um, more ordinary galaxies than we thought, maybe more dust than we thought, things like that. I'm not saying that I claim that dark matter is not real or doesn't exist, but I think when they say that it makes up the majority of what the universe is, it may not quite. Maybe, it, you know, I still think it's more likely that the majority of the universe uh, is made up of ordinary matter. And if they've already found 10 times the galaxies they expect to discover, um, it says here, the results have clear implica implications for galaxy formation and also helps shed light on ancient astronomical paradox. Why is the sky dark at night? In analyzing the data, a team led by Christopher Consolens of the University of Nottingham, UK, found that 10 times as many galaxies were packed into a given volume of space in the early universe than found today. Most of these galaxies were relatively small and faint, with masses similar to those of the satellite galaxies surrounding the Mil Milky Way as they emerged to form larger galaxies and the population of density of galaxies in space dwindled. This means that galaxies are not evenly distributed throughout the universe's history. The research team reports in a paper to be published in the Astrophysical Journal. So, yeah, kind of, kind of makes me, you know, kind of makes me feel good that my guess was perfectly right, especially since I kind of blew it on the Higgs boson. I predicted the Higgs boson was not going to exist, and it did. So. Anyway, this last one now, I wanted to give some credit to Dave Nicholson, who's been one of our major contributors um, in the past, keeping the uh, Dumpster Diver site on Facebook going. Um, this is one of his latest posts on the TDD page on Facebook. Apple reportedly doesn't want to build a car anymore, just its brain. Apple has been working on a not-so-secret car project for years. Project Titan, as it's called internally, has already gone through a bunch of leadership and roadmap changes. According to a new report in Bloomberg, the company is now scrapping plans to build an electric car. The car team is focusing on autonomous driving technology instead. I can see that too. I mean, just putting together and building the car itself, building a robotic type car 
I don't think technologically that's even a stretch nowadays, but building the kind of brain that would make the car operate right. I mean, I think probably uh, most of the decent large universities have already uh, built and competed with uh, um, different types of cars that could uh, just, you know, maybe use a brain like this. So initially the company wanted to build a traditional Apple product with the company controlling both the hardware and software components. Apple planned to ship its electric car with self-driving technology after 2020, but Apple has scaled back these ambitions. According to Bloomberg, hundreds of engineers have been re reassigned or let go because Apple doesn't want to build an electric car anymore. Apple plans to partner with existing car makers instead. Think more like Android and less like iPhone, and of course Apple could decide to build a car after all. I think the other possibility too is why not just contract it out? Concentrate on what you do good, Apple. Um, build the kind of brain that the car needs and just contract to another company like Tesla or anybody that's building electric cars to uh, do the modifications so that your particular software can you know, make the car operate properly. So, anyway, that's about it for this week. Take care, everybody, and thank you for tuning in. All of the all of the links to everything I've been talking about will be found in the description below, and I will catch you guys next week.